Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to another video. And this is a paid request from Ilko. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, whether it be a random topic, movie review, re-review, commentary, reaction, playthrough of a game for an hour, or full playthrough, whatever the case may be, random thoughts, tier lists, rankings, topics, movie news, whatever the case, feel free to send it. PayPal is usually the best bet. I do have a Patreon and a Cash App for those interested. All links are down below in the info box. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so much. But Ilko asked me, what are my thoughts on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, as he puts it here. I've been watching the show lately. I borrowed the DVD box to have a friend of mine to watch. I'm almost at season 5 now of the TV show and I'm enjoying it a lot. Maybe you could do a review on this TV series of the 90s and early 2000s as a whole. What do you like or dislike about it? Well, number one, I can't watch seven seasons of a show just like that. So, number two, to be honest, I have not seen this show in 20 years because, of course, before this you had... The movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you know it's a movie that I remember being okay I'm sure if I watch it nowadays it would actually be more charming but I remember it had an interesting cast you had Donald Sutherland you had Rudger Hauer you had Paul Rubens aka Pee Wee Herman and God what was her name I always forget her name who is the star of that Christy Swanson. I think Hilary Swank was in the film as well in a smaller part. David Arquette was in it. Thomas Jane might have been in the film. Like, I do remember like did some like didn't love it, but there were some charming parts to it. Well the film came out, it didn't really do the, that well, but I guess maybe there's some interest on video. One well, leads to another, and Joss Whedon, he was able, who had written the script, he was able to get this show done and came out in 1997. It was on the WB, then when that was kind of going kaput, it went to UPN. And it was a huge success. Now, I didn't watch it when it came out. I think like you, well, I didn't borrow a DVD set, but I think I was at a store, like a pawn shop, and there was season one on DVD. And I went, okay, like I said, I vaguely remember the show. I mean, the, the movie, I vaguely remember the movie. Let me give this a shot. I do remember liking the first season. Sarah Michelle Geller, I thought, did... A really good job as Buffy Summers. She was strong. She was likable. She was tough. The script, the dialogue seemed rather witty. Uh, the other people, you had Nicholas Brendan and Allison Hannigan, which she would be in the American Pie films as Buffy's friends. Uh, Charisma Carpenter, who would be in the first Expendables movie. She was kind of the... The queen bitch of the school. Anthony Stewart Head I liked as Giles, the mentor for Buffy. Then you had uh, David Boreanaz as Angel, the vampire who had, had a soul, so he was a good guy, at least for a bit. Uh, Seth Green would later be in it as a werewolf. Among other characters. But you know, the first season I remember liking because they kept it simple. It was at Sunnydale High School. She's a high schooler, and I'm trying to remember if it took place after the first movie, because she knows a bit of what's going on, and they've moved to another place, and her old mentor died, Dallas Sutherland, and then she gets a new one, who's Giles. 
So I'm trying to remember if it was a sequel to the movie in that way. Can't remember. But I mean, it was this, you know, Bid Vampire, the master, and you gotta defeat him, and this place is the hell mouth. That's a way to explain why all these crazy supernatural supernatural shenanigans keep happening in this one specific spot. This is the hell mouth. And then he, she meets Xander and Willow, played by Nicholas Brendan Allison Hannigan, and become sort of a trio. Well, they help her in certain ways. And like I said, do you remember enjoying it for what it is? Where again, you have the wit, humor of things happening in high school. Nicholas Brendan at times had a little bit of a, I don't want to say Bruce Campbell, but a little bit of that. He's the regular guy who's way over his head and he's trying to do the best he can. I remember him doing a pretty good job in the role. Allison I always thought was really cute. Being a chipper and cheery and optimistic. You know, that type of character. Like I said, the season one I remember being, keeping it fairly simple. And I think it was season two where you had the character Spike. Played by James Marsters. And you had this other vampire, Dr Drusilla. And they come in the raise hell. That might be when Angel is introduced as well. The the good vampire. Or was he in season one? Maybe he was in season one. I see it's been so long he might maybe it was season I can't remember. Yeah, I think it was in season one. Because he warns her about the master. The master character. It's season two where Angel is helping them deal with Spike and Drusilla. And then, I think at one point, like, they fall in love. They have sex because they had sex. Somehow, now, the good soul is gone from Angel. And now he's a villain with them. And in order to save the day, it's like, we gotta banish Angel. But by that point, he got his soul back. So now, he's like a good, you know, this good soul is now banished to hell and it screws up Buffy a bit. And I think in season three, Angel comes back, but he's out of it. I think season three is when you have. What was her name? Faith? Yeah, I think the. Uh, Eliza Douched You, that's what it is, Faith. Who's like another slayer. And not the band. And she's an ally at first, but then I think eventually she'll become a bad guy later. I think season three is when the mayor is the bad guy, and I think that's when they, they blow up blow up the school. I think they blow up the high school at the end of that. And that's around the time Angel and one or two others go off to do the TV show Angel. Because Angel and Buffy can't be together because if they have sex then Angel will be a bad guy again. I, I, I do remember just enjoying the characters. Enjoying the dialogue between the characters. You know the effects were their time so they're not going to be high caliber effects. You know, in terms of the CG and some of the other aspects of it. I don't remember it being a gory show. Because it was on the WB, so they couldn't get away like with Evil Dead type of gore or anything. Remember the makeup on the vampires not being too shabby? God forbid if I try to remember any of these specific episodes. Because like I said, it's been like 20 years since I've seen the show. I know there was a there's a demon that Nicholas Breton's character fell in love with. Because I remember there's a point that he left her on the altar and she got pissed and became a demon again to find his ass. I think season four is when they're going to college. There's this guy who is a military guy, 
Riley, I believe, Mark Blute is that actor, where Buffy falls in love with him, but then like later he realizes she doesn't really love him because she loves Angel. I think the group that he's with, you find out they're bad guys as well. And I did this when our characters are in college. Spike, which I do remember liking the character Spike. Because I remember him being a very cool, smarmy, cocky antagonist with some funny one-liners. And then around season three or four, he had this microchip implanted. Where he could not, uh, he couldn't uh, attack humans, and of course he likes to fight, but he can't kill humans, so he helps buff in them out. I do remember Spike getting more and more popular with the fan base, and that's why he got you know bigger and bigger roles throughout it. To the point that eventually they made him a good guy. Where they made him fall in love with Buffy and he doesn't understand it. This is when he's still evil. He's got the microchip. So then like. It was around season five or so that things got a bit weird. And that's the thing. I remember like the first four seasons not minding. And around season five and six things got a bit weird. And I just. How I saw the show, like I saw the season one and I liked what I saw. But when I would come home from school, that was around the time, 2000, 2001, we finally got cable. So I would watch the sci-fi channel. And almost every night after school, I would sit down and there'd be an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm trying to think, was it? I'm trying to think, what year did it Buffy end? 2003. So I'm trying to think. Would that have been the syndication then? I don't know. I swear it was like on Sci Fi Channel or something where I would see it was like on like every day. I'm I'm swear I'm not making that up. Cause I know it was that in like Babylon Five was another one that I would watch every day and be able to keep up with stuff. Cause we didn't. I don't remember watching on the WB. It's been so long, man. It's hard to remember. Cause I do remember watching Babylon Five every day. I swear Buffy was one of those as well. Anyway. I remember like season four, there was like this creature partly made of metal and they would fight it. And season five is when it got a bit weird for me. And I mean, there's stuff that I don't mind throughout it. Well, actually, you said you're, you're almost at season five. Shit, that means I would give it away. <laughs> Whoops. Uh... How the hell do I do it? You're almost at season 5, so. I like the show. I like the characters. I thought it goes a bit wonky later on. I would say the first. The first season or so is my favorite. Like The simplicity of it was fun. Then the more it got complicated, the more it got kind of weird. And I would say like the first four seasons, I think, are the best ones. Five, six, seven. I'm like, eh, some stuff I don't mind. There's one that's a musical that's kind of interesting. There's one that... Wasn't there an episode where there's no sound? Buffy episode. Oh, I might... Maybe I'm getting them mixed up. Yeah, Hush. When everyone loses their voice, they must solve the mystery of the monsters who stole their ability to speak. I remember that being a very intriguing one. Yeah, it's called Hush. Uh, what season was that in? Season 4, Episode 10. Okay. 
and wasn't there one was there was another one with singing right yeah once more we're feeling is the seventh episode of season six so again the there are some episodes that work and are interesting but i think just the overall arc and story this is spoilers so you go if you don't want to hear spoilers because when it gets to season five all of a sudden buffy has a sister named dawn played by the actress michelle trachtenberg who i think was in harriet the spy among others and i'm sitting there going what the fuck which is on purpose when did she get a sister what the, when did that happen I remember when I first saw that being confused as shit as to what the hell was going on. I'm like, did I go see now? Did I have a, a stroke? Like, what happened? And then you find out that, no, there's some thing that created this being as a key and it's dawn and people were, fake memories were put into, into the thing. To make her fit in. And this is spoilers. Another thing that I. I honestly did not like that they did. I did it though. Because it creates a very emotional moment. It is a very impactful moment. It is this is the bit where her mom dies. It is an impactful episode. Because she, she just assumes. Understandably so. It's got to be some kind of demon. Some evil, some it's like something murdered her, because her line of business. But no, it was just uh, something in her brain that happened, Sally, to anybody. That couldn't happen to anybody, and her just not be able to, her trying to deal with the fact that this is not something that she could get revenge for. This is not something she could punch through and stop and kill. There's nothing she could have done, and there's nothing she can do. So I get how impactful that is. It just said that character, that, that actress, seemed so nice. But that's the the part. That's the point is to have a very uh, emotional wallop for the character. But I think more so just the the inclusion of Dawn and the, the sister. I don't know. That's when I went, oh, really? What the fuck is this, man? And that's also when Spice fall in love with Buffy. And I'm like, what? It's like, what? Now, okay, Angel fell in love with Buffy. But now Spice don't fall in love with Buffy? Really? What? 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 What's going on? What? Why he's in love with her? And it, I remember that it ends with Buffy sacrificing her life to save Dawn and, and close the portal or something. And I said, like, oh, okay, all right. Obviously, she's not going to be dead. They're going to wait till the new season and then do which they did. And then. Season 6, like, they breed her back, but she's pissed off because she was in heaven. I guess if I was in heaven, people breed back, I'd be pissed too. But then she decides to have this relationship with Spike because they both want to punish the other some weird way. It is toxic relationship, I guess, best way to put it. I don't know. I think that's also when Allison Hannigan kind of has her dark phoenix moment. Because you find out that she's a lesbian and she falls in love with someone. And then that girl gets killed so she gets pissed and becomes a dark phoenix and becomes what seems like the big villain. But it gives uh, Nicholas Brendan something to do. It kind of does remind me weirdly of X-Men <laughs> The Last Stand now that I think about it. Where you the Dark Phoenix and then Wolverine, or in this case, Xander comes up and able, well, in this case, able to snap her out of it. <clears throat> I 
And to be honest, the last season, I don't remember much about. I might not have seen much of season seven. Because season six kind of... Again, there were episodes like the singing one, which were, okay, different, unique. But I just feel like, what the fuck? Like, I get it. It's changing things up. But I'm like, what the hell? Like, Spike's in love with Buffy. And then Dawn. Like, who the fuck? Like, what? I think I saw the last episode. So I remember who lives and who dies. I think. I'm like, okay, well, that's the end. Okay. I don't know how I felt about it, though. It's okay, it's this big, you know, ordeal, and they fight the big bad, and spoiler alert, I think the whole town, doesn't the whole town become destroyed? Which part of me would go, well, well, that was pointless, you try to do all this to save the town, then the whole town gets destroyed at the end, but to be fair, it's more to save the world, not just the town, it's to save the world, so... I s yeah, I think like everybody escapes, and then uh, I mean I guess yeah, ended for good. I think I do remember an end having an ending at least, not a cliffhanger ending. I said I don't remember. I like, spoilers. I think. Forget who all dies. I think that demon who was in love with Xander dies. I think Spike, like he's got his soul now, and he gives he does the self sacrifice, and he dies. Unless he came back in Angel, I don't remember. You know, I didn't see Angel to be honest. I wouldn't have remembered anyway. But, you know, let me look that up. I have it here because I'm looking up the names because I didn't want to forget the names. Let me just look up the characters. If you hear a buzzy, this is the soda. There's like sound. Um, why does it not tell me? Okay, come on. If I go over here. Uh, so I'm trying to find where the hell the other characters are spike there you go <clears throat> Let's see where this is Spike returns in the fifth and final season of the spin-off series Angel, resurrected by the amulet in the LA branch of Supernatural Law Firm. He spends seven episodes as an incorporeal being akin to a ghost. Yeah, I guess he does come back, so there you go. Sorry for that silence for a bit, because I didn't even know, because I never watched Angel. That was a show I never watched. I knew of it, but I just never watched it, so. I would like to go back and watch this show one day, I will say. One day I would like to go back and watch the show. Because I do remember having fond memories, especially the first four or, or so seasons. 
like, like I said, the fifth and the sixth, I remember going, hmm, like, okay. Uh, you know, kind of go in that direction. But, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely be curious about it. Sorry that I, I didn't go more in depth on it, but like I said, I, I haven't seen the show in, in decades, so. But I do remember it being pretty good. With that said, <laughs> that's all I can say for now. Take care. Thanks for sitting in Yoko, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.